Continuous and comprehensive asset visibility is an essential precondition for any organization to manage cybersecurity risk effectively. That's the premise behind the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agencies, or CISA's Binding Operational Directive 23-01. This binding directive tasks federal agencies to achieve two core activities on a regular basis. One involves asset discovery. The other involves identifying and reporting vulnerabilities associated with those assets. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and here to talk about what agencies are required to do, the progress they've made, and recommendations on how to manage those efforts more effectively are Michael Duffy, Associate Director, Cybersecurity Division at CISA, and Dean Seisman, CEO of Axonius. Um, and uh, Michael, I'd like to start with you. For the past several years, federal agencies have had to follow what's known as Continuous Diagnostics and Mitigation, or CDM, guidelines. What prompted CISA to issue um, the Binding Directive 23-01, and what does it require agencies to do apart from CDM? Great. Well, thank you for the question, Wyatt. And, and that, that is right. CISA's flagship cybersecurity program is the Continuous Diagnostics and Mitigation Program. We established the program over a decade ago to really provide the risk-based and, and consistent, cost-effective cybersecurity solutions for the federal enterprise really helping agencies to achieve what we call a minimum baseline for cybersecurity. And we do this by deploying a common set of tools, such as asset management, and integrating those kinds of capabilities across all federal agencies. And for many years, and this is from the beginning of the program, CDM was established primarily to be an agency uplift, to make sure that we're building capacity um, for cyber risk management maturity through adequate tools and technology and integration, and though improving asset management has always been part of what we call phase one, that initial foundational step of really understanding what is on your network, it was never part of a definitive policy requirement. And that's the big shift. And I think that's an important first question for you to ask is there was never really an operational directive stating what is expected of a federal agency when it comes to asset visibility progress or the way that they are truly harnessing their tools to report out on the state of their network. Um, as we've embarked on a new era in the CDM program, one that has shifted and transitioned, evolved the way that we're thinking about both operational visibility, but also collaboration across all federal agencies, CISA really saw an urgent need to prioritize asset visibility and vulnerability enumeration and consistency in the way that we're doing data quality work to enable that operational role that CISA has across the federal enterprise, but also supporting what agencies are doing on the ground. And this shift, I think all of us are tracking, uh, began in about 2021 when the federal government experienced several major significant cybersecurity events, high profile events that demonstrated that the lack of visibility that we um, had identified as a challenge for many years was actually a barrier for us to have effective cybersecurity response as rapidly as possible. Also seeing that agencies weren't able to remediate vulnerabilities that were known on networks at pace with that adversarial activity, that was a major issue for us. So we in CISA, in response and with the support and investment of both Congress and the White House, we set our sights on truly an enterprise focus of gaining that operational visibility to facilitate things like rapid response and collective cyber defense. And that was really a shift in the way that the program had functioned. It really took that first phase of asset management and it charged it forward to make sure that we were very clear, explicit of what was needed for us as an enterprise to operate. So Binding Operation Directive 2301, as you mentioned, um, is, is the, the tool that we've used to make measurable progress towards enhancing that visibility across agencies into their assets, into their associated vulnerabilities based on the assets that they have on those networks. We're now in our first year of Binding Operational Directive 2301. Uh, we've seen agencies making significant progress. Those that were already trending in the right direction based on their CDM deployments have really harnessed that capability. Uh, we found that over 90% of federal agencies are meeting key thresholds within that directive, which really sets us up at CISA to be able to 
um, effectively support agencies as they are locating vulnerabilities, especially those known exploited vulnerabilities on their networks in their enterprise uh, to make sure that we can remediate them quickly before an attacker is able to exploit those vulnerabilities. So it also helps us uh, in my final point, as we're thinking about that operational visibility, that enterprise approach to cybersecurity, this allows CISA through that consistency, through those timeframes that we've set through this binding operational directive to be able to understand what's happening, not only at an individual agency, but across the enterprise and share information on both vulnerabilities and challenges that we're seeing within agencies across the board. And that has really helped agencies better understand the current situation of the threat environment or the, the, the rapid response needs based on that new level of operational visibility. Well, for those of us that have followed CDM, we know it's been a long journey to get on top of asset inventorying and asset management. Can you talk a little about why has it been so hard to do? And now what are some of the additional challenges of identifying virtual servers, cloud-based assets, IoT sensors and the like, you know, operating on today's networks? Fantastic question. And, and uh, it is a great point that in the early days of the CDM program, and this is 2012, 2013, CISA quickly learned that agency asset counts, those estimates were sometimes off as much as 300%. Um, there was a dramatic difference in what tools were telling a CIO or CISO and what was currently on the books, the expectation that you might have of, of your enterprise. This was a time of, of pretty significant growth in everything from new technology to cloud environments. And again, this is over 10 years ago. Um, large agencies are and were at the time managing vast bureaucracies and federated bureaus and offices that were sometimes funded independently. And in the early days, the department level CIO had really little visibility into those true digital footprints. That was where we found ourselves about a decade ago when we began this investment. And again, as I mentioned in the prior question, asset management being foundational, phase one of that original CDM program, the civilian government manages roughly 4 million endpoints across the board. That is a, a high number to have any blind spots. It's something that the federal government feels strongly that we must have a way that we can wrap our arms around and really have that true denominator of what assets are and where they are within agencies. So fortunately, a decade of investment in CDM has dramatically improved where we are today. Um, however, we've shifted our focus quite a bit just over the past several years as we are um, seeing agencies move to modern technologies, moving to cloud environments. And as I said previously, responding to significant advanced persistent threats um, that are focusing on all of those environments and more, we have to shift beyond compliance and risk governance solely through the CDM program and move into that state of interactive cyber operations. That's where CDM and host level visibility are so important to us to inform those strategic and tactical discussions. Um, we felt very strongly that we couldn't wait for the lingering asset management challenges to just sort themselves out. Um, we saw a great trend line, agencies were making good progress, but the Binding Operational Directive 2301 was really set out to define the end states, standardize the periodic scans and enable on-demand scanning when we knew that a, a cyber event was on the horizon. Uh, we've seen great progress in that. Uh, the, the challenges of asset management still persist, but I think we're in a much better state today for a couple of reasons. One is because internal agency alignment, governance and reporting expectations are now very clear. Those are three areas that have held back agencies quite a bit over the past decade. Um, again, I mentioned the federated nature of a lot of the large departments, uh, that consistency and comprehensiveness of what asset visibility and asset scans provide us is really key, not only to CDM, but if you can imagine as a CIO of a large agency, understanding where your assets are how they're being managed and what the current state is, is incredibly important, not only for cybersecurity, but for investment decisions as well. Um, we say that right now, it isn't enough to have 70% visibility across your enterprise. And frankly, it isn't enough to have 100% visibility just on premise. 
Uh, many, many, many agencies, most if not all, are leveraging a majority of cloud uh, cloud environments for their asset management right now, and it's a different ball game. It's something that we we feel strongly that getting to 100% visibility is key to success, regardless of environment, regardless of where those assets re reside. Um, so I mentioned a few of those. The increase in device types in federal networks has changed quite a bit in the past decade. The realization that these devices, especially mobile devices, are coming on and off the network. We call those roaming devices. Um, some never actually attached to the network, but are still of concern and, and priority for some CIOs. And each asset management tool, uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about this a bit later, um, does discovery and inventorying and management a little bit differently. And that's sometimes as simple as the difference of the word one to the numeral one to 1.0. One um, these things are are different in machine readable forms, and it can be challenging using different tool sets. At least a decade ago, this was a challenge of asset management to truly make progress is that integration layer to really be able to harness what you have to understand it and to have that ongoing visibility uh, across your environment. Absolutely. Well, uh, Dean, um, you know, as Michael points out, we're playing a different kind of ball game today. So what types of tools and capabilities, you know, are required to tackle uh, these challenges? And what sets the more modern tools apart from the tools agencies have traditionally used? Yeah, I think that historically, the approach to doing asset management was either uh, one of three kinds of approaches. It was either network-based, meaning scanning the network or looking at network traffic. Um, the other uh, angle to approach it has been uh, agent-based, meaning if you can install an agent on something, then that agent tells you everything about that asset. Um, and the third has been sort of the manual or CMDB, which is like you manually input data in a spreadsheet or in a CMDB to keep track of everything. Now we know that none of these approaches uh, work for the modern way that uh, environments are, especially in the federal agencies. Um, the network view is, is very shallow and it's very hard to even ascertain what is the coverage that I'm scanning or looking at today because of the work from, from anywhere and the cloud. Um, the agent perspective is only as good as the agent knows about, and many times that it's very specific to a specific operating system or a specific environment, uh, for example, on-prem agents versus cloud agents or Windows versus Linux, um, et cetera. And obviously the manual does not work uh, for, for obvious reasons, I think. And what we've realized uh, in Exonius is that the real answer is very similar to the analogy of a puzzle, right? When you want to understand your environment, it's like looking at a puzzle, the only way to really see the whole picture is first, if you have all the different pieces, and these could be data silos that are already in your organization, right? You, you already have a network uh, set of controls, you already have agents, you already have identity controls, you already have cloud platforms or virtualization uh, uh, platforms internally. And every one of those controls has a piece of the puzzle, right? And knows something about your assets, whether they're devices or identities or applications. But the real answer, the real thing you want to understand is how do we take all those pieces of the puzzle and then put them together? Just like uh, Michael was saying, um, if I'm thinking about a certain device, I'm thinking about a laptop, it has all these different angles that give me some part of that picture about it. And if I could have integrated them all, or as we call it in Exonius, and that's what we really strive to do when we work with companies, is to show them that you can correlate all that data and get to a singular clear answer about what that asset is based on all the different perspectives. And you can do that for every asset, right? There's been this cynicism, I think, around how close you can get to 100% visibility that should not uh, continue to, uh, to prolong because the tools, and especially combined with the right processes and people, can really let organizations get to close to 100% visibility across everything in their, in their environment. Well, uh, Michael, I'm getting back to the Binding Directive 2301 and its objectives. What more is CISA doing or providing to help agencies meet those objectives? Yes, and, and why, before I even jump into this, I, I, I'll, I'll start by um, transitioning based on where, where Dean left off, which is the, the human element of all of this. I think that um, it is 
quite certain that we have some great asset management capabilities out on the market right now. Um, agencies are leveraging just about everyone that fits within the CDM uh, program architecture and model. Uh, but it really comes down quite a bit to the way CISA is engaging with agency leadership and agency teams to ensure that level of um, integration and support and, and planning really comes down to the, the planning of your enterprise um, is being done as a unified effort. So CISA often finds enterprise communications coming from CISA across all federal agencies can really initiate the right kind of dialogue so that the right folks within the agency are coming together to have those planning discussions to solve the, the challenges that may have been barriers in years past. And oftentimes those agency practitioners know what needs to be done, but could use that level of top cover from CISA. And, and we find that binding operational directives are especially effective at starting those types of discussions to make sure the prioritization is very clear. Um, three ways that we've done that within CISA to support agencies as they are rolling out and implementing Binding Operational Directive 2301. The first is baselining. So we provided uh, technical assistance on the ground with agencies to conduct asset management baselining through our CDM program. These are uh, rigorous reviews of the way that agencies are currently um, deploying technology and assets across their enterprise, identify any root causes that might be challenging for, as Dean said, 100% visibility across the board. And then we assist them in formulating some kind of solution or capability to address all of those challenges that they've experienced for years sometimes, really kind of minimizing those edge cases. Um, the second is leveraging our CDM dashboard, a major investment that we've had over the course of the past decade has been establishing this dashboard hierarchy to enable reporting. So knowing what's on your network is really only as good as being able to visualize it and process it in a way that makes sense for leaders. And for us at CISA, we've built in 2301, this directives uh, report out to, to allow a CIO or CISO to see where they are in the continuum, where how far along in asset management maturity they are. They can track that themselves. We can work on the ground with them to get to the next rung. Uh, but, but having that visualization, just as any kind of project management 101 would tell you, um, that's important. And the last piece is engagement. We, everything from office hours to direct on the ground engagement with every level of agency leadership and practitioners, this has been something that we have I've discussed in every forum to basically say asset management, operational visibility is the only way that the government can get ahead of the threat environment, really truly understanding what's happening across this enterprise so that we can quickly remediate vulnerabilities and prevent exploits from occurring. Um, so that's constant contact with every level, CIO, CISO, practitioner, to make sure that they've appropriately prioritized this work and come together as an organization to, to resolve those challenges that we may have identified through baselining efforts. And then lastly, gentlemen, given all that CIOs and CISOs are juggling today, what recommendations would you suggest to you know, accelerate their understanding of the assets and vulnerabilities on their network? Uh, I'm sure the dashboard helps, but what more can they do and what else would you recommend? Uh, Dean, I'll ask you to take that one first. Yeah, so the thing I would I would recommend is that to understand that uh, prior to what uh, they have been accustomed to, when you think about the term asset management, I think uh, us, you know, we really coined as a company the term cybersecurity asset management. And now, obviously, uh, you know, there's the new elements of the binding directive, the CDM program. You see analyst firms outside of the federal government, like Gartner, call it uh, CASM, which is cybersecurity asset attack surface management. And I think this new uh, wave of understanding how to approach this problem from a correlation uh, um, approach of taking the existing data and putting it together, not only creates the ability to really have close to 100% visibility or even 100% visibility across everything, regardless of the type of asset or type of part of the environment, it also becomes something that is foundational for every other process that you're doing, right? Whether it's vulnerability management, obviously, how do you do the remediation? How do you prioritize the vulnerabilities? It starts with understanding 
what are those assets, what vulnerabilities they have, and even more importantly, the context, the business context of that asset, because obviously a test machine in some uh, engineering lab is much less important than a production server holding you know, confidential information. Um, and that asset context really allows you to do vulnerability management much, much better. Um, and that's true for, for so many other processes that you're already spending effort and investment into, whether it's patch management or digital transformation um, or uh, you know, allowing remote work, uh, using IoT devices. So what I think uh, people need to understand is that regardless of the size of the of the organization, and we have customers from you know offices or bureaus all the way to you know wide departments that are all using um, um, that approach, is the mentality that this causes a lot of other existing processes and a lot of other existing investments to become much more efficient and also help those processes um, gain a lot more coverage and efficiency by having the asset management data. So I guess it's don't underestimate the multiplier effect of what you're learning from that. Uh, Michael, your last thoughts on recommendations? I, I'll just pile on to say that it, it is certainly an investment worth making, um, whether you need to plan a few extra sprints across your team or sustain the effort somehow. That level of insight and situational awareness and decision support is just vital to today's cybersecurity environment as a leader of an organization. Um, I'll give an example. The last week, we were tracking a, a the prevalence of a recent zero-day uh, vulnerability being exploited uh, across the globe. And, and we noticed a few unmitigated instances uh, across the enterprise, engaged those security operations centers, um, and the CISO uh, came back to us and said, you know, this is exactly what we've always imagined. This is This is how we would like it to work. As an enterprise, we have that shared situational awareness, that visibility into our assets, an understanding of vulnerability enumeration in a way that we hadn't in the past. And we were able to alert that organization to take an immediate action. Um, that is something that didn't exist and couldn't exist without um, close to 100% asset management, asset visibility across the board. So that perseverance in that last mile, um, if you think that 75% could be good enough or um, let's focus on this category and maybe leave out printers, for example. We know for a fact that a lot of those devices that you may be tempted to leave out are also vectors for attack. And, and so feeling that you have a sustained effort, an understanding of that perseverance and that readiness to be able to take on this, this endeavor is extremely important. I mentioned the CDM dashboard as a way that we enable leaders within agencies to track progress. Uh, and I would encourage all to leverage, monitor the trends that you're seeing. You may see assets coming online and offline, um, and, and that's very normal for large enterprises. It's worth understanding why that happens and how you can close out any gaps or blind spots that your team has identified previously uh, to make sure that you are in the right situation moving into the year ahead. Some great points. Well, Michael Duffy and Dean Seisman, thank you so much for joining us, sharing some of your insights, uh, uh, not only about the directive uh, 2301, but more broadly about the power of getting full access, full visibility to your assets and managing those accordingly. So thank you both for joining us.